The ancient Egyptians buried their dead here in the west bank of Luxor, in this remote place, because of one reason, that pyramid behind me, the mountain that is topped out with a pyramidical shape. The ancient Egyptians of the New Kingdom were buried here, the kings of 18th, 19th and 20th dynasties. They wanted to imitate their ancestors who built the pyramids of Giza almost 1,500 years earlier, since the pyramidical shape refers to the cult of the sun. King Seti II ruled Egypt in the 19th dynasty. That's when the pharaohs gave up the idea of hiding the entrances of their tombs after most of their ancestors' tombs in the Valley of the Kings were robbed. They also cared about decorating the entrances with colored reliefs. Naturally, the work in the tomb would start in the front and go deeper step by step. So if the king died suddenly, the front parts of the tombs would be the only ones finished. And that's exactly what happened here. Seti II is dressed in his royal outfit and crowns and faces the lord of the dead, God Osiris. He greets him with a statue of Maat, the goddess of justice, asking him for a fair judgment in the netherworld, the world of afterlife. Then we find the three symbols of the sun in its daily life circle, right behind that scene. So the scarab is a sun in the morning, the circle is a sun at noon, then God Atom is a night that closes the life circle. On this section of the wall, there are parts of one of the religious books that's called a Midwat, which means the book of what exists in the netherworld. This book is composed of 12 hours that represent the night hours. The texts are written in simple hieroglyphics, but they are unfinished. The sarcophagus of the king was found in the burial chamber, empty. His mummy was found hidden in another tomb, the tomb of King Amunhotep II, together with 12 other mummies. By the end of the 20th dynasty, it was clear that all the hiding tactics and plans failed and robbery prevailed. In panic, the weak kings of the 21st dynasty, who were priests, gathered the royal mummies and hid them in two locations. They left tags on each mummy to record that information. Thanks to their devotion, the pharaohs fulfilled their only hope in life, to be immortal after death. Usret was the last ruler in the 19th dynasty, the dynasty which is known by the great pharaoh Ramesses II. After the death of her husband King Seti II, she took over and ruled for two years, before the dynasty weakened 
and a Syrian man called Erso took things under his control until another one called Setnacht managed to put an end to the 19th dynasty and started a new one, the 20th dynasty. The walls of the tombs of the Valley of the Kings are rich with scenes and texts from religious books. They describe the imagination of the Egyptians of life after death in the nether world. One of these religious books is pictured at the entrance walls of the Queen's tomb. It's the Book of the Dead. So called it the German archaeologist Lepsius. The book is composed of 200 chapters or spells. Their aim are to ensure the safety of the deceased against the hardship of the netherworld and assure his eternal life there. But the main purpose of the book was to help the deceased to exit his tomb during the day. In this particular tomb, the queen has chosen the chapters that start from 145. Each king or queen would choose their most preferable parts of the religious books and would have them relieved on the walls of their tombs which would have been made during their lives. When King Setnacht usurped the tomb, he covered the queen's scenes with taco to draw his own. That act was done by several kings as well, in other tombs. In the New Kingdom, there were two central places where the contents of the Book of the Dead were prepared, the two cities of Thebes and Memphis. Thebes was the main capital and Memphis was a military capital. It's known that some of the chapters of this book had changed from one dynasty to another. But in all cases, the pharaohs were keen on expressing their worship to the sun god. This was achieved by recording the sun's song or prayer on the walls of the corridor that follows the entrance. Keeping the balance between the basic need of ensuring the mummy's safety to guarantee immortality in the netherworld and the continuity of the relationship with the sun god. The burial chamber is found at the rear of the tomb and her sarcophagus was found in a perfect condition. of the tomb that dates back to 1168 BC are all original. The tombs of the Valley of the Kings never cease to amaze even the archaeologists, as till today many secrets of the great ancient Egyptian civilization are still buried and perhaps time will tell.
The tomb of King Ramses VI exists above the tomb of King Tutankhamun and is considered one of the biggest royal tombs in the valley as it penetrates the rocks of the mountain at a depth of 93 meters. The tomb was originally dedicated to King Ramses V, whose name was found at the front part of the tomb. Then Ramses VI took it and completed its final part. In 1770, the scientists of the French campaign in Egypt called it La Tomb de la Montancicos, or the Tomb of the Reincarnation, as they thought that there is a special scene in it that shows the spirit reincarnation. The English scientists, however, called it Memnon Tomb, imitating in that aspect the Greek tourists, who called the tomb of King Amenophis III the Tomb of Memnon. Perhaps because the coronation name of Ramesses VI is Nebmait Ra, which is the same name used by the great king who preceded him, Amenophis III. A lot of graffiti texts were written by the Greek visitors, which indicates that the tomb was opened and known during the Greek rule in Egypt. The Coptic texts found on the walls of the tomb prove that a group of Christian Egyptians stayed in this tomb at the early centuries AD. The walls of Ramesses VI tomb are characterized by being a complete stage of religious texts or a grand library of religious literature, which are the texts that discuss by word and picture life and death and the resurrection of the great sun god Ra. The walls of King Ramesses VI tomb comprise almost a complete record of the religious literature that were the pillars of the ancient Egyptian religion. For on its walls, we find records of most of the religious books which were known before, like the Book of the Imidwat, or what exists in the netherworld, and the Book of the Gates, and the Book of the Dead, and the various sun chants, and the destruction of mankind, and also the Book of the Caves, which appeared before on the walls of the Osirian, which is a symbolic tomb of King Seti I in Abydos. Other books are found also, like the Book of the Day and Night. The Book of the Day was recorded here for the first time in that astronomical figure. The last book presented here is the Book of the Earth, known as Aker. The tomb starts with an entrance followed by three aisles A, B and C, then a small chamber D, then a hall with four columns which acted most probably as a burial chamber during the reign of King Ramesses V. This is followed by two aisles, then a small chamber, ending finally by the burial chamber of King Ramesses VI, which has a small chamber behind it. Thus, the tomb's most realistic name is the double tomb. At the door seal of the tomb, the sun disk is seen, in which the scarab and god atom with a ram head are represented. On the door sides, the names of Ramesses VI are written, instead of his predecessor, Ramesses V. This also forms a record of the political events that occurred in Egypt during the New Kingdom in the Ramesside period. of the tomb of King Ramesses VI in the west bank of Luxor, we find the scene of the king that used to represent his predecessor, King Ramesses V. He stands in front of Gadrahul Akhti and Osiris, followed by scenes of the first and second chapters of the Book of the Gates. On the right side, he releases incense in front of the same gods, followed by the scenes and texts of the Book of the Caverns. 
A whole copy of this book appeared on the symbolic tomb of King Seti I, known as the Osirian in Abydos. It was his grandchild, King Merenpetah, who ordered it to be recorded there. The scenes and texts of this book were carved also on the walls of the tomb of Queen Tausret, the wife of King Seti II. The scenes of the Book of the Caves are characterized with their oval shapes, which could possibly be coffins containing some gods and revered dead. The second isle is guarded with a winged sun, being the icon of protection presented specially on gateway seals. The third, fourth and fifth chapters of the Book of the Gates are represented on the left side. Here we see the famous scene known as Osiris Hall, which the members of the French campaign on Egypt saw to be the scene of reincarnation. It shows the deceased being judged by the scale in front of God Osiris in his hall of judgment. The scenes on the right are of the second chapter and beginning of the third chapter of the Book of the Caves. On the walls of the third aisle, the chapters of the Book of the Gates continue. Here, the sixth and seventh chapters are introduced on the walls of the inner niche. They are texts from the mythology of Gadra, which is called the story of the destruction of mankind. All these religious texts played an important role in the preservation of the soul and body of the deceased against the evilness of the netherworld. In the Valley of the Kings, the tomb of King Ramesses VI is rich with its religious texts that provide a complete library of the literature of religion with its various books and hymns and mythologies. The front aisles comprise reliefs from the third, fourth and fifth chapters of the Book of the Caves that has got oval shapes of sarcophagi with gods within. The square chamber at the end of this main aisle in the tomb bears scenes of the 8th and 9th chapters of the Book of the Gates and the 5th chapter of the Book of the Caves. The preceding chapters of both books were represented on the first two aisles of the tomb. A hall with four columns in two rows follows and is totally relieved and colored. On each column the king is shown with God Khonso or Amun-Ra or Goddess Meret Sejer who reside on top of the mountain of the Valley of the Kings. The purifying water is presented to God Petah Soker Osiris who is known to be the god of the dead. The valley is his kingdom. The walls of this hall bear reliefs of the 10th, 11th and 12th chapters of the Book of the Gates. The 12th and final chapter of this book is distinguished with the famous scene of God Nun getting out of the eternal water carrying the sun boat, in the middle of which is God Khepari, the scarab, which represents the new rebirth of the sun. The sky goddess Nut welcomes the sun while standing on the head of God Osiris, the god of the netherworld. Both Isis and her sister Nephthys are in the shape of serpents lying on the top and the bottom of the scene. By reaching the final chapter of the Book of the Gates, the deceased has successfully passed through the hard tests of the netherworld and would deserve the ultimate reward which is being reborn again like the sun which never dies.